Hey everybody, Stacey Wells, Stacey Wells Artistry. This is part two of the big pour. Um, I just cut this in half because I felt like it was going to cut itself off. It always does when I'm doing a big one, and this may take a while. So, and I have another problem. I just realized the cats want to get on this board, and they've been sleeping on it. I had to clean it off, and I'm afraid they're going to try and jump on it after we pour it. Problem. I don't know how to fix it yet. I'm going to work on that. Anyway, I've got these put out, separated the way I want them. I always pull them all, uh, turn them all over and pull them down. It's probably going to go everywhere, but, you know, that's the way it goes. Well, not too bad so far. Now I'm going to move a little more because I was trying not to run over the other one. Anyway, that's the way it goes. Good thing I put that paper down. All right. Can I carry that box out here when I throw it? I don't see a box. No. I don't see a box. Oh, people drive me crazy. Do you know that? They do. They irritate the hell out of me. Especially people like my soon-to-be ex-husband. Okay. Now, we're going to let those sit for just a second. Uh, because I want all that paint to dry, to drain down. And um, because I put that treadmill oil in the base of these cups, it, it will come out more than it would if you didn't. Uh, like I said, the treadmill oil and the paint repel, so it's going to help get all of it out. But I like to give it a minute to kind of settle and all that. In the meantime, I'm going to get the torch because we're going to need that. It's hard to torch at that angle, I'll tell you ahead of time. Um, and it's going to cut off a lot. And I'll probably, uh, after we get done, I'll get my small torch and go over the middle a little more. Um, because the middle is the hardest part to get with that big torch. But I like the big torch better. Um, it, you know, I just like the big torch. Um, it covers more area. But it has a problem wanting to shut off, and I don't know if it needs more fuel. It might, but it's kind of old, and I'm not sure. But anyway, whatever. We'll just make the best of it. All right, we're going to pull these down and then let them breathe. Ooh, got some pretty cells there already. a lot of blue in it, but I, I wanted uh, there to be there's some pretty cells. I don't know if y'all are going to be able to see shit on there, but uh, I can't do much about it. What I can do is show you when we get done. I'll pick the phone up and I'll show you. Okay. Now, see a little blob there. I think that's an air bubble. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to torch it just a little bit because I got a bunch of air bubbles in there. This apron turns into a tourniquet after a while. I'm just going to get some of these air bubbles out. Richard, I'm in the middle. I just want to. The torch is done. They did pretty good for that. Another thing about this tilting, which goes for these bigger ones even more than it does for the little ones, you cannot get in a big hurry. And 
my mistake most of the time is I want to rush it. But it causes your cells to become distorted. Um, it'll even ruin them. Um, so it's important to take your time. thing is you're going to make fingerprints on this edge there's no way to avoid it that I know of so what I do is just when I'm done I come back and I swipe up some paint from the pour off and I put it on those edges where um, my fingers have been because it's the only way to do these large ones to be able to hold on um, adequately because I did a big one one time before I posted it. The video must be still up. It was three feet by six feet, and it was actual wood, birch wood. So it was really heavy. Um, it got very slippery and hard to control. I think I even dropped it a time or two. Um, okay, see, I'm doing just a, a little bit. I got both those corners, and now I'm switching sides because... See these lines, the way they're going? If you do too much at one time on one side, it's going to just completely distort that. And I like that effect. So, um, I don't want that to get all screwed up. And i got some pretty cells forming in there, too, and I don't want to destroy them. Now, you watch. I'll get this done, and I'll be happy with it. One of those damn cats will jump up here and screw it up. Mm. This, this poor has uh, I think some better potential in the way that it just laid out you know nothing that I did but the way the paint poured out because I'm I'm finding this easier to tilt than the other one I did another one the other day and I didn't video it and I'm gonna have to redo it and I will video it but um, it just didn't do right at all sometimes despite all your preparation and your best efforts it just don't go right and uh, I don't really know why that happens sometimes sometimes I find out why sometimes I know um, let's get that corner down there and that edge okay yeah. this is much lighter and I have a bad back now I can't wrestle with that birch board it, it's um, for something this size, it's just too heavy. I got that corner. This corner. Okay, we'll push it back that way. See, I'm going one side and then the other, and that way it's those lines are gonna stay somewhat vertical. I don't care if they're not completely vertical, that doesn't matter. There's a bunch of cells forming that are distorting the way the lines are anyway. I just don't want them to end up real confusing and wiper sided looking. And the other thing is, you know, like I was saying about not rushing, don't lift this too high. You may not be able to really see it, but the paint is moving, even with it up like this. Y'all can see a little bit right now. And I can, I can see it moving, but um, sometimes with these big ones, it's... A real temptation to want to raise it up real high. I did that with that big one because I was having a hard time holding it. And um, when you raise it up real high, it speeds it way too much. And um, see, I, I, I have, I'm, I'm resisting the temptation right now because it's heavy and it hurts my back, and I really want to hurry. But I know that that's going to screw it all up. So. I mean, if you see a big roll of paint moving down there and you can see it visibly really moving along like a big lava flow, you're going too fast. The other way you'll know is you'll see your cells start to stretch in a way that doesn't look pretty. Um, so this just takes the time it takes, you know. 
I think it's really pretty. It's got some awesome looking cells up here. One thing I did wrong on the one before this is I didn't have enough paint. I had only six of those big cups and they weren't completely full. And so I got them bored and I still had some space left and that was one problem. Um, I had to go in and mix more paint, which you never want to have to do. Um, okay. Pull this back a little bit because that's touching and it's going to run. Sure, I got these corners and edges all covered from where I. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. Get that one in there. See, most likely, you'll have enough on your hand to cover up where you were touching in a way that'll, you know. But the other thing about resining, if it has paint on it, it'll help with the resining process if you um, have splotches over here that don't end up with paint covering them the resin will definitely uh, most likely react to it in a bad way it'll make holes you know uh, unresined areas okay that's pretty good now let's see Let's just see. I'm not sure I'm going to pull with it much more. Um, I'm going to torch it again. But the other real thing I have to resist is overworking a piece. Um, especially a big one like this because um, really it doesn't take that much. Once you cover the space and you got your corners covered and everything, if you continue to manipulate that, you're going to likely end up with a bunch of distorted cells and lines that don't make sense right here they're kind of coming in on the sides and kind of waving through the middle and i like that uh oh crap um let's see what this does the other thing is i, I i've got enough paint on there but not um a whole lot of, I mean, I don't want to end up with too little paint. And if I continue to tilt it and pour it off, you know, it's going to cut down on how much paint I have on there. Now, some of you are saying, why do we torch? Some of you already know. But just for those who are new, um, we torch because of the air bubbles, for one thing. See, it's causing me problems. Um, and also because that's how you get the cells to appear. I mean, you will have cells appear before you torch. But the torching um, causes the paint to uh, liquefy a little more and move around. And that's what creates the cells, which are the openings. Yeah, I ain't afraid. Go ahead, do your thing. Um, the openings between uh, the paint layers is what the cells are. If you haven't ever done this before and you're just getting into it, don't want to confuse anybody, I'll show you. But you can see my torch is not acting exactly right. I'm not really sure why it's doing that, but it may need more fuel. And I'm not planning on doing a whole lot of painting in the next little while, so I don't really want to screw with adding fuel to it. Uh, it it'll just get me through these uh, pieces I'm working on. I'm going to go back to stained glass after that, and uh, I'm working on a stained glass piece I'm going to do a video on right here in a few minutes. So, see those cells popping up? That's pretty. I like this line right here, and I'll show y'all. I don't know why it was doing so much better a minute ago. I was getting the inside and everything. And now it won't hardly... I'm going to get my little torch and go over that middle part. Because it's going to flame up and go out. But um, anyway. 
it's going to continue to change um, for a while after you torch it. You know, it'll as it sets up, it will change even more. So, another thing you want to be really careful about, which I screwed up on with that other one, fissurous level. Y'all, there's nothing worse than having something big like this and setting it up and pouring it with that much paint that you spent all that time on and then coming back the next day and find that it's run off all distorted and crazy looking because it wasn't level. And that happened to me the other day. And you'd think I'd know better, but apparently I don't. All right, let me turn this around and let y'all see. All right, there's the whole thing. Now let's look slowly. Okay, see those little circles where you see different colors of paint through the one color of paint? Those are cells. That's what we're trying to get. That's what we like. That and just the general color mix. Well, that red looks bright, even though it's a garnet. See those pretty aqua cells coming through there on the left? Those are really nice. I like that little black line that runs through there. That's pretty. I'm doing this one for my dining room because I'm tired of the they look like doctor's office patient doctor's office pictures that's really pretty and I don't like them they're not me they don't say anything about me they don't say anything at all um they're very plain you know if I can just keep these cats off of this I think I'll be doing really good but I don't know exactly how to do that I think I'm gonna get my squirt bottle out here and uh instruct them a little bit that's really pretty. I'm really happy with how this is looking right now. That area, wow. When all those cells. Pretty cool. Big one right there. Lots of little pearl cells kind of through there. They aren't technically pearl cells, but they look like it. Here's some more right here. Oh, yeah. That looks like a, a, a Nautilus <laughs> to me. And that kind of looks like a jellyfish. <laughs> Isn't it funny how when you look at these, everybody sees something different. That's one of the things I love about it. Um, I had a man come up to me at the farmer's market one day and said, that looks like a man's bastion brains. And I said, well, you know, what you see says more about you than it does about the painting. <laughs> in other words I said I'm sorry that's what you see I don't see that at all but okay um, anyway I, I hope y'all have uh, enjoyed this today I hope y'all like our result I hope the cats stay off of it um, and um, please feel free to email me uh, or message me. I love hearing from y'all and I, I do apologize again for being on my hiatus and not getting back to y'all that message as soon as I would have liked to. I, I, I didn't realize that people were even remembering anything about me. I, I, just, I had to quit for a while and I just didn't know anybody was even messaging. So I'm sorry about that, but it won't happen anymore. Uh, and if you have questions or comments about this piece or any of the other ones, I've got... Um, Two or three other two other videos videos already posted about the Christmas balls. They're labeled something like my comeback and Christmas balls. There's two of them, and then um, I'm going to show y'all right now. I'll just do it right now and show y'all what the Christmas balls that we did yesterday. This is what they look like when they're in process. These are um, just gessoed, and that's how I do it. I put it on a board like that with those little dowel rods. That's the way I keep them separated. And then um, I'm going to show you what they turned out like and, and stuff. This is from uh, yesterday. I'm going to have to go over. See, those are from day before yesterday. These are from yesterday. I'm going to go over these again with the shiny spray because I ran out of my triple coat clear spray. And I'm using some kind of spray paint clear gloss and it's not working as well. So I'm going to have to go over those again. I want to show you these also. Uh, those are just little clear bottles I got from Hobby Lobby. And I pour painted them in resin at the top of them. You know, for Christmas gifts or just to put around the house. Whatever you want to do. Here's um, another one. Um, I think they turned out really pretty. 
Um, here's one in here too. Um, I see the colors in that, how pretty. Um, and they make nice gifts and whatever you want to do. There's some of my stained glass. And there's my cat, one of my cats. There's nine of them. Mostly outside, thank God, but nine all the same. Anyway, I'm going to get that water bottle and squirt those other ones out there to keep them off that piece. But those are some of my pieces. And um, I'm working on another one right now. Right here. It's a big one. It's for a friend's mother for Christmas. This is a bevel. Um, and then this is the drawn out pattern that you can't make much sense out of without being able to see better. I'm going to go ahead and trace out the pattern and then I'm going to record parts of the steps from then on for those of you who like to do stained glass if you're interested, tune in for that. Anyway, but thanks y'all for being here. I appreciate it. Let me get my water bottle before I forget, forget it so I can squirt those cats. Y'all have a wonderful day and uh, stay safe and healthy and uh, join me anytime and again feel free to message me email me if you need to if you need an answer on something really quick or you're having a problem please don't hesitate let me know uh, if i can help you i'd love to uh, i love talking to other artists meeting other artists and um i'd be happy to uh you know to try to help if i can see it's already it's still changing even just in the time that we left off but i'm pretty happy with it it's gonna look good in there all right, guys, thanks for joining me. I know it's a long video, but I appreciate you being here. Have a good day.